I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It kicked me out while you guys were talking about the kids there. Mm. Okay. So I'm just going to take a quick second to introduce ourselves. So I'm Kelly of Calm Waters Cloud Accounting and now of the Sassy Accounting Coach. And Mike Potter is of Rewind. And Rewind is an automated backup app or an app that automatically backs up QuickBooks Online, um, BigCommerce, Shopify. What else you got going, Mike? Uh, MailChimp and Klaviyo. Right. And I should have known that because I actually have my MailChimp account um, backing up as well. Yeah. Okay. So um, I have been using for my backups. I'm just going to give a brief history of what I was doing before I finally settled out on Rewind. So um, for my QBO file, so, you know, redundancy for the sake of redundancy, we, we, we pretty much know that Intuit, and you've got to have a leap of faith on this, that Intuit has is, is got our files stored securely somewhere out in these server farms, and they use Amazon Web Services, and that they're doing a pretty good job of covering all of that off. But a lot of us come from the world where we want to actually literally rewind a file. We want to test drive uh, a new, maybe a, a journal entry that we're going to do. The clients are going to muck about uh, in the product. I'm going to muck about in the product. There's a whole ton of reasons that backing it up through an outside application has its benefits. And Mike, I think you're going to get into some of those. But also, but also the backup program for me, um, because these are internet-based programs and it's a weird glitchy world out there. So I try to make sure I'm covering myself. So sometimes for some reason, we I think a few of us know what the glitches are. Journal entries tend to be a bit of a glitch. Um, anyways, it doesn't matter what it is. I have always been sending my clients GL, AR, AP and trial balance as automated email reports into a um, sort of, uh, what do you call that, uh, alias email address. And then they have been basically tucked away. I don't see them. There is, I have a filter in my Gmail for that and they go into the place that I want to go and I don't need to look at them until I need to look at them. Um, but then- you ready? Oh, if you go to close out a file, you may start to, oh, may start to wind up with issues around how you're going to store the data or whatever the case may be. So anyways, I also was finding it very cumbersome to go back to some of those reports I had done. And so now I, I and I had also had safety net for years. As long as safety net was around, I was in beta on safety net, but um, then they stopped the program and then somebody else bought the program and then it, it just wasn't making any sense. So I started looking for something a little while ago and some of my accounting buddies were on Rewind. So here we are. Uh, I adopted Rewind. I have all of my clients on it now and I add it as a service offering. It's like a benefit for them. So I mention very often that I have, um, I'm insured, that I'm certified. I have all of these sort of value add touchy. I have a cont emergency contingency plan. All of these things are things that I use as the soft sell features for my clients. Aside from being a bookkeeper, I've got all of these other things that are sort of looking after them in the background. And it's been nice to add rewind as one of those value added services for them. And so that's my schmeal. So I'm going to introduce you to Mike Potter. He is from, Rewind, and he is going to do a demo for us and talk to us about his product. Go ahead, Mike. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, I can assume everybody. I assume everybody can see the, my screen. Um, so if you can't, just maybe let me know. But I think you know the reason we started Rewind was because a lot of what you just said, Kelly, which is you know people generally um, are looking to back up their data. They don't necessarily know uh, how to do that in a reliable way. But more importantly, it's cumbersome. Any other process that you've got is really cumbersome. And so what we've tried to do is to make Rewind as easy as possible, as automated as possible, so that you don't need to worry about it and you can sort of offload that responsibility. We, we see people doing exactly like what you've done, which is added into the packages that they are providing. 
I've also seen customers um, uh, upsell or add it to uh, add it as an additional cost to their customers and use it as a potential profit making, uh, a potential additional revenue stream. I shouldn't say profit making, but additional revenue stream for them. And that's really entirely up to the client. We'll get into billing models a little bit later. You can use the word profit with us. We're accountants. And sure. Partners. We like profit. We preach it to our clients. Okay, carry on. It is. So the, the, the most important thing that people need to know is really the difference between what Rewind provides and what QuickBooks provides, right? Because this is the core crux of the problem. And if you don't understand the difference, then you're not going to understand why you need a product like Rewind. So if you go into the QuickBooks help documentation, you'd see something like this. It says, does QuickBooks online back up my data? And the first answer that they give is yes, right? And so in addition to always maintaining two copies of their data, they automatically back up everything every day. It's stored on firewall protected redundant servers. So your data is safe from hardware and software failures, hackers and viruses. And all of that is absolutely true. But because we update your records with every change, we cannot restore your file to a previous point in time. And that's really important to note, right? So do they have a backup? They do have a backup. They have a copy of your data in a different place. And if something happens to that single copy of the data, they can restore the other copy of it. But what they can't do is go back in time and undo changes that you've made accidentally or that have been made to your account. Okay, so they have a backup of the entire system. It's really, I don't really like the word backup for them to use there. It's really more of a copy. They really have a copy of your data and it's on. It's always updated, the way the way that it's, it's always reflecting whatever the active versions are, whatever the active data in your accounts are in your files. And right. Because of that, and it's because the they're updating it, they can't go back in time. Right. It's the live data. It's a copy of all your live data, yeah. essentially. And so, if you accidentally delete something, you can't go back and ask them to, you know, undelete it or bring it back. And, and that's really what a backup is, is the ability to go back in time and undo changes that you've made, right? Rewind something back to the way it used to be. And so they do, they do sort of get around the, the question of do they back up your data with the word yes, but the last sentence really says actually no, we don't have a backup of your data. We have a copy of your data, but we don't have a backup because they can't restore your file to a previous point in time. And it's really the, the only useful thing that a backup would do. Gotcha. So what causes those problems? Like why would you ever need a backup, right? So Kelly talked about, um, about some apps that, that have been integrating. We were talking earlier about Zapier and some of the integrations that, um, that are being used with Zapier. Anything that is pushing data into QBO um, has the potential of causing major problems to your application. So generally, in fact, we've never seen any of the platforms that we back up. So whether it be Shopify, BigCommerce, QuickBooks Online, MailChimp, Klaviyo, we've never seen the core product cause any problems. So, you know, in this case, we've never seen QuickBooks Online or Intuit cause problems to their own data set. But what we have seen are apps that integrate into QBO causing major problems, right? Probably the most popular um, most popular problem that we saw was HubDoc's problem about a year and a half ago where they deleted all the attachments that had been added into people's accounts, right? QBO in general has very, very high quality standards. They've got very, um, uh, lots of automated testing that they go through. That same level of care is not necessarily happening in every app that you're integrating into QBO. So if you've got an app that's writing data into QBO, you really need to be very uh, careful about that app. You need to make sure that you trust it. You need to vet that app before you install it. Because um, if it can write to your QuickBooks account, it can delete data from your QuickBooks account, and it can cause major problems to your QuickBooks account. And that's really the number one place where we see data problems being caused in QuickBooks Online. Okay, great. The second... The second one we see a lot is CSV imports. Anytime where people are dealing with CSV files, it's a recipe for disaster. It's a very um, particular format that you need. Sometimes special characters like accents, um, commas, um, apostrophes can cause problems in those imports. Th those are very, very finicky um, processes if you're importing data via CSV. So that's the sort of second area that we see a lot of people running into problems is you're importing a CSV file. If you're doing that, 
you know, you really need to have a backup before you're doing that. And then the last one is really just general, general human error. I mean, you know, everybody's working hard. Everybody's working late. People make mistakes. Stuff happens, right? Mm -hmm. And we've seen people importing data into the wrong file because they're working late at night. We've seen uh, in Shopify, uh, the most popular one I've had or the best story I had was a cat jumping onto somebody's keyboard and causing their Shopify store to go down. I mean, we've, <laughs> we've literally, we've seen everything, right? But human error, I mean, people at some point are going to, are going to have a problem. And it's just a matter of, you know, can you catch it fast enough or do you need to really rely on a backup? Those are the three main reasons that we see um, people problems coming up in people's data in QuickBooks online. Kelly, have you seen anything else other than, than these three sort of main areas? Um, no, those would, be the, those would be the ones that are causing, causing trouble in the, um, in, in, in the, in the plot or in the application. Yeah. But it's interesting if we have time at the end, um, I would, if, if I, if we have time at the end, although everybody knows I yak on a little, it would be uh, if I can get out what my old, what a workflow without rewind to um, close down, because uh, this is the other use case use, right, is closing down a yeah. file. If I yeah. can show you what it used to look like to close down a file, that would be an interesting one too. But yeah, yeah no, I would say those are the, those are the big ones, integrations, us and CSVs. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, this is this is the slide that we sort of like to go over to show what what does rewind what does Intuit's backup provide and what is covered by um, Rewind's backup, right? So the you know the unlikely events of you know a meteorite landing on their servers or like they mentioned a virus or a data breach of some sort that's all covered by Intuit's backup, right? So they've got a a, a backup of the entire system, if you will. What they don't do is allow individual accounts or individual files to access that backup. So what's covered by the rewind backup is anything related to the data in your particular file or files that you're managing. So we talked about third party app errors, malicious data. Um, I don't think we've ever seen that in QBO. We've certainly seen it in Shopify where there are um, collaborators on the account that are going into uh, into the store in that case and, and maliciously deleting things to, um, uh, to cause problems. Talked about CSV imports, human error, you know, these things are a lot more likely to happen than a meteorite landing on the servers. And so what <laughs> Intuit is covering is a very, very unlikely scenario. And obviously the more likely scenario and what we've seen in terms of third party apps and human error is really what's covered by, by Rewind's backup. Um, We've seen lots of, we've got lots of examples. We've got, um, you know, thousands of customers that are using Rewind to back up their data. Um, in this case, Lynn, uh, who's founder of Healthy uh, Books, had an inventory management app that accidentally had $9 billion worth, $9 billion worth of inventory um, that didn't exist. Too bad that they didn't buy into that. Yeah, well, although there was a, a couple apparently last week had $150,000, I think, added to their bank account, and they went out and spent it. Now they're getting arrested by the police. So oh, yeah, might yeah, be lucky yeah. that she didn't get that into her bank. Yeah, it was, um, uh, they bought it. They bought, sorry to go off track. It's my specialty, and I do have a bell so that I, I don't do it as much. But it's, uh, they bought an RV. Yeah, they went yeah. out and spent this 150 grand. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Carry on. Um, so nine billion would have been a really good party for Lynn had she um, had she had that to her bank account, but unfortunately it was only added to inventory. Um, and That's the bigger part of the balance sheet. Yeah, exactly. The balance sheet, which is okay. Carry on. Shut up. Unfortunately Kelly. for her, it was you know she, they didn't they didn't find it for four weeks, right? And and that's really the bigger problem is these apps are adding data without any notifications to any accountants or bookkeepers, right? You have, you, you have no clue that the inventory management app is doing something. They're not sending you updates or, or information. And so that error went left up for four, four weeks and she ended up having to spend about 15 hours, a couple of days cleaning up the book, just cleaning up this problem that um, the inventory management app caused. So nothing on her own doing, um, but cost her two days worth of work. Um, and she's now installed Rewind to make sure that she's got the ability to you know, undo changes like that, that Rewind would have been able to, to deal with absolutely with no problem. Mm -hmm. 
So they really are, at least we consider them essential when integrating numerous apps in QBO. So, you know, we're looking for a couple of things. One, if you've got uh, apps that you're building into QBO or integrating, you should really should have a backup before you're installing those apps. If you've got multiple people working on the file, so if you're um, in an organization where there are multiple people accessing the same file, you really should have a backup of the data before that happens. If your clients are accessing the data before uh, or at the same time as you are, you really should have a backup of the data because most of the people that we hear causing problems are really the clients. It's never the accountants or bookkeepers. It's always the, uh, it's always the clients, right, that it cause would, the problems. It would never um, be the bookkeeper and if or you're the accountant. importing data. No, no, never the bookkeeper. It's always the client that has that causes it. Right. Um, and, or if you're importing data of any kind. So if you're doing CSV imports or adding data into, in, into your accounts or into your files in some way, you really need to make sure that you've got a backup of that data. Uh, in terms of who we are, so we are the leading backup service for SaaS applications. We started about four years ago doing backups for Shopify. We've since expanded to QuickBooks Online, BigCommerce, MailChimp, and Klaviyo. So if you have any clients that are on Shopify or BigCommerce, um, we could certainly help them back up their online stores as well. Uh, we have over 10,000 customers across all those platforms. We're based in Ottawa, Canada, uh, just down the road from Shopify's office, actually. We're currently, this is how fast we're growing, we're currently 30 employees. So the slide's already out of date. Um, and we've got over 800 reviews across all the apps that we serve with, um, with a five-star rating, five out of five. So people really love the app. It works very, very well. Um, we guarantee that it's going to work, um, and we are we're more than happy to help people when they run into problems. I, one of the things I'd like to mention, one of the things that I really like about it is it keeps app overwhelm under control. So because you can use Rewind for a number of your online applications, so especially the e-commerce side, and most of my clients also have MailChimp. Yeah, I, yeah. and uh, you know, I think... You know, most people, maybe I didn't mention this actually, but the problem that QBO has is not is not solely a QBO problem. It's a problem with basically any SaaS service that's out there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the problem that QBO that we solve for QBO is the same problem we solve for Shopify, for big commerce, for MailChimp. Most people might not know Klaviyo unless they're in the e-commerce space, but they're a big e-commerce email provider. Um, Zero is the same thing. On a trial, Google Docs, Office 365. Um, these are all platforms that we're looking at uh, supporting in the future. Oh, okay. With Actually, yeah, uh, all of those are um, so key to backup. And I've been mucking about with some of the uh, backup apps, certainly for my Google applications. Yeah. And it's 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 not seamless. So, but again, back to the point, it is nice that you guys are covering a few platforms already so that our clients don't need a number of different backup apps. Yeah, our goal is really that you end up with like a single, a single account that's, that's helping you manage and protect all of your online data, right? So whether it be in QBO or Shopify or Big Commerce, MailChimp, wherever it happens to be, we want to be helping you protect that data and manage it. Um, so that's sort of the long-term vision of what Rewind is going to do. In terms of what you get with Rewind for QBO, it's an instant automated backup. So there are no settings for Rewind. You don't select um, where you're going to, when you're going to save the data. Uh, you don't select what we're going to backup. Um, there's really no settings. I believe for QBO, we actually do allow you to select which data center you're going to back it up to. So whether it's a Canadian data center or a US one, we'll talk about that in just a second. Other than that, there's no settings. Um, we've really tried to focus on making it as simple as possible to use. We, we're a team of 28, 30 people, so we've got a dedicated support staff that you can reach either via phone, email, or instant chat. Um, we've got data security, uh, sorry, data centers in um, US and Canada. So I believe we're the only provider that provides um, Canadian level data center or Canadian data centers to Canadian customers or rest of the world as well. Um, so if customers are concerned about um, or your clients are concerned about where their data is being stored, um, a lot of people in Europe or outside of the U.S. Um, really don't want their data being stored in the U.S. So we do store their data in Canada. We can do a complete export of the data as well. Um, and Kelly, I think you were talking about that for future audit purposes where we're exporting the data into a zip file that you can store wherever you like. 
uh, if you need that zip file or if you need that export in the future, we can bring that back into a new QBO account. Um, so that's really good if you're closing the books for, for a customer and you don't want to keep their QBO account um, going because, you know, there's no need to keep it going. There's no new data that's coming in, but the company is shutting down. Um, you don't need to continue to pay for QBO. You can export the data and if we have to, we can import it back in if you get audited. Um, and we've got really flexible data restores. So the, you know, yeah. we'll go into a bit about how Rewind works in a second, but essentially each um, item of the file is being uh, backed up in an individual way. So we don't do a snapshot backup like you used to have um, on the desktop uh, version of, of QBO or in other QBO backup products like Chronobooks. We do individual item backups. And so we'll show you in just a second about how that could really save some time uh, by okay. only rewinding the specific items that are changing and not the entire file. We have a question and apparently yeah. uh, Tiffany has chatted in rather than uh, discussed in. There you are. Tiffany, do you want to ask your question? Just easier and then Mike can answer it. Uh, does Rewind back up every data point? Uh, so we back up everything that we can, that, that QBO makes available to us, yes. So there, there are certain things that QBO does not make available. Um, so some of the payroll data, for instance, is not available to any um, to any application. So that data we can't get. We do get like the payroll transactions. We get the employee information, um, but the payroll data for QBO is typically handled by a third party company. So they don't have the actual payroll data data, um, but anything that, that, uh, that QBO makes available, we do back up. Yeah. And there's a list on our website. If you go to help.rewind.io, you can see a list of all the items that we back up for QBO and some of the stuff that we don't. Do you guys back up journal entries? Oh. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. Carry on. <laughs> so how do we do that? Um, it's very easy. You go over to app.rewind.io to create an account. I'm going to show you that in a second. And then you just link your QBO account. So if you're, you know, an accountant or bookkeeper, you can use your QBOA login and then you can back up multiple client accounts. You currently have to link each individual client account, but we're working with QuickBooks to try and resolve that problem. Uh, the first backup happens automatically. Um, you don't need to start the backup or do anything, and it should generally take just a couple of minutes in order to finish that backup. So I'm going to see if I can show you what that looks like. Just going to make sure I'm still logged in here. We've been chatting for a while. That's perfect. And I'm still logged in to QBO. That is equally perfect. <laughs> So this is what um, the Rewind app looks like. I've already signed in to, uh, to Rewind. If you've got a new account that you want to link, you can just come in here, click the link new account, and then just link your QBO account. I've already linked our demo account, so I'm not going to do that. But if you'd like to link your MailChimp account or BigCommerce, Klaviyo, Shopify, whatever you like, you can just do it in one spot. You'll go through the uh, process to, the, to authorize Rewind to read your data. And then once we do that, you're going to end up with a rewind vault, which is where we store all your data. It's going to look something like this. Um, you can see we've got, you know, some invoices in here. We do a lot of work with Walt Disney in this account. Um, all sorts of data that we've got. Most of it's older, um, but this one for Disney um, ha is really the one that we go through the most in our demos. So I'm just going to show you that invoice, for instance. If you click on view versions, you'll quickly find all the historical data that we've saved um, for this particular version. So you see the current version on the left hand side, and then you can see the selected version on the right hand side. And so this is uh, invoice number 1003, the balance due is $452. We go into QBO, we take out that filter. This is an old invoice. We will see the Disney invoice is there for $452. It's item number 1003. So that's the one that we're currently dealing with. And you can see if you watch this balance due that we've been changing this invoice um, and how much has been uh, due on it for quite a long time. So I'm gonna rewind back to the one that's uh, for $101.70. And it's currently being done. Doesn't take very long. If I go into that invoice, it should be rewound now to $101.70. So 
but invoice has now been uh, the balance on you can see is now two at forty five dollars, two of the Mickey Mouse ears. Total is ninety dollars instead of what it used to be, um, and uh, and it's now been rewound to whatever it was beforehand. So if we go into that version again, uh, and the backup will run in just a few seconds, you can see actually the current version now says one hundred and one dollars, and the previous version from earlier today was for four hundred and fifty two dollars. So every time we make a change, we're storing a new version, and we do each of those for each individual item. So you're asking Kelly about journal entries, for instance. Take that out, we do a search for journal entries, we can filter that out. And we'll see just the journal entries. I don't think I've updated any of these journal entries. So, the, oh, I have updated those journal entries. So we've got a journal entry here um, that we've added. I don't know what the changes are. So if I don't know what the changes are because the, the display here is not showing me enough, we can actually see the actual data that's stored. So this is the source data that is being stored for this journal entry. And when we find one that's a different version, we'll actually highlight the differences. So I know that was a question that you had yesterday, I think, was can I see the differences in an account um, before I do a rewind? And so the answer is absolutely yes. Um, you can see that this one has had the ID changed. Um, and some metadata changed, not really very useful if you don't know what that means. But if you go back to that invoice, for instance, and we find our invoice for this, and you go to see this, you'll actually see the amount is now highlighted. And so you can easily see, oh, on August 28th, um, the amount was $450 instead of $90 because we were buying 10 of them, uh, the quantity was set to 10 instead of two. So you can easily um, go in and see the differences before you actually go in and do the rewind and say, actually, no, I do want this one with 10 of them um, because we really like buying 10 of these instead of the two that we've got. So let's rewind this back and you can go ahead and do that. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, and if you come back in here and rewind that, that quantity should be set to 10. Live demos, so you never know, but it should be working. So there you go, quantity is set to 10, so the amount is back to $450. And which, so it's really interesting what I was talking about before was, you know, the flexibility in Rewind is allowing us to, to restore this invoice without changing any other things in the file. That is cool. So yeah. that back was a big that was, desktop, right? Yep, that was a big sell feature for me. Right. Because if you're doing other work, like if you've changed this invoice and then there's other things that are happening, you don't want to lose all the other stuff that you've done. You just know, oh, my invoice is bad. So I need to restore my invoice or my journal entry is bad. But if I need to rewind that one journal entry, I don't want to lose all the other work that I've done since that journal entry problem happened. And so with rewind, you can rewind just the individual items that you need in order to get your account back to the way it was. Now, of course, if you don't know what's what's changed, you know, you can come into your vault. This is basically like your audit log, right? You can see that this invoice has been restored. This invoice was updated on August 28th. This item that we're selling was added on August 28th, uh, 2019. This purchase was updated. This is your audit log, and then you can go and see your based on a date range you can filter based on just certain item types but it's going to help you identify and say okay what are the things that have changed you know between in the last seven days let's say just show me the stuff that changed in the last seven days that's the only thing that changed the only thing i need to worry about is this invoice but if you've changed more stuff in your account your accounts are likely busier than ours you can get down to very specific timelines and then just restore the stuff that you need to and of course, if you don't know what, what's gone on, so you might, you know, in a lot of cases, people come in and say, look, I don't know what I did. I have no clue. I just know that this is not right. But I do know that it was right a couple of weeks ago. So if you wanted to say, okay, actually, I want to rewind all my journal entries, you can certainly do that. But if you don't know what's going on, you just select all the item types. You select the date. So you go, actually, I want to rewind them back to September 1st, 12 a.m. I know the account was good at that time, so let's do it. You're about to rewind 
to have the on September 1st, 2012 a.m. Eastern. You enter in your email address, and right now what that's doing is it's sending a request to our team, and we're going to manually um, rewind your account to make sure that we're getting it right. And we're pretty confident now. We've been doing this for about a year to make sure that we're getting it right. This is what we're working on right now is to automate this. And we expect that to go live in the next couple months. But for now, you're going to send us an email and we're going to go back. And we're going to rewind your items for you. And we're going to basically hold your hand to make sure that everything gets done exactly the way it should be and that it's matching your expectation. Okay. Now, and what if you send that in, we'll, we'll work on that. That's as fast as we can. We'll work on it as fast as we can and we'll get back to you. We'll give you a timeline on how long it's going to take. But it's the highest priority item that the team works on when we get these requests in. Okay. Go ahead, Tiffany. Uh, Mike, is there the ability if when we're setting up a new app integration and we turn on the integration and it shoots over a whole bunch of stuff and it's ugly that we can actually rewind that, but we wouldn't necessarily know what date range it was depending on how far back the integration goes and what transactions it would be. So, I mean, we're always willing to help you and try and figure out to determine what the right date is, right? So in that case, if you know, um, if you know something that the app did, so we know that it created, I don't know, let's say it created some journal entries, we use that as an example, or it created some items, some, actual, items. Uh, some yeah. created some invoices, let's say. Yeah. And say, okay, I, this is an item it created, but I don't really know when it did that. We can, we can go into your account. We can, in, we can inspect your account. We can say, okay, well, we saw a bunch of items that were added, you know, September 4th. So maybe these are these are the ones we'll send you that list and we can say are these you know does this look right you can spot check them a couple of them say yeah, actually that looks like it's about the whole list so if you don't know the exact time we're more than willing to work with you to try and figure out okay how do we how do we get to that time so that we can say okay let's rewind it back to this time so we'll work with you to try and figure out and there are ways that we know that we could look at to say okay how do we know what this app did so I guess a more correct question would be if we know the creation time and date is right this minute and all of it went bad, can we rewind yeah. everything that that app did at that time? Or is it based on the date of the transaction in the general ledgers? Uh, so if it's, cre I think what you're saying is in some cases, apps are creating things and sort of backdating them. So they're creating them today, but they're backdating them a little while ago. Yeah, we can, we go by, we, we go by the date that they were created on. Creation date. Okay. Yeah. Not the date that they appear um, on the, on the GL. Okay. So that's where I was confused where it says on how they appeared on. Yeah. What, what should the text say there then? I don't know. Created. When they were added, when they were created on. Good feedback. We'll make that change. Wow, Tiffany, you've got the power. <laughs> no. Actually, it, Tiffany brought up an interesting point. I wonder if there's ever a possibility to rewind by an app. I'm just throwing it out there, Mike. That'd be yeah, nice. Yeah, it would be nice. We don't we don't get the information of who created things. So one of the things that we that the customers have asked for definitely is in this view. Can you show me who restored this invoice or or who added the invoice or who created it? Right, like kind of like what you would get in the um, in the audit log. And right. basically, what what people want is kind of like having a bit of an undo button next to the audit log, which is like, okay, I saw that this was done, and then just undo that little thing. And unfortunately, QuickBooks doesn't send us who did it. Um, not no app that we back up actually tells us that information. And it's consistent. People want that across every platform that we back up. Shopify yeah. store owners want to know who's been modifying their inventory or what app's been modifying it, or what customer what customer support person was refunding a customer, whatever. And unfortunately, no app is sending us that information at this time. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that's really it from a demo perspective, you know, I mean, there's really, like I said, there's really no settings um, for you to manage. There's nothing that happens. You'll notice that I never even ran this backup, but, but it shows that the invoice was restored um, and it happened at 3.30. So I never had to run a backup 
Um, it just happens automatically. And that's what happens with QuickBooks. You, you never have to come in and run a backup. Now, if you want to, and you want to make yourself feel good, you can always come in and click backup now underneath the action menu, but you don't you, need to. Are you saying accounting professionals are controlling? No, if you want to do it, you can do it. <laughs> Makes you feel better, but, um, but rarely will clicking this backup now button actually do anything because it's all happening as you're making changes in QBO. So as you're going through QBO, we're listening to all those changes. QuickBooks is sending them to us um, and we're updating this vault view. Okay, I have a, a, a use case scenario. So uh, an expense. So a receipt has gone in and then somebody deleted that expense. Can you reinstate that and it has the source document attached? So we do, um, we do back up all the attachments. Yeah. And so when we do rewind that item, we'll bring back the attachment uh, back to that receipt. And that, um, that dependency is, um, is the part where I said there's stuff that we're learning in QBO. That's all the stuff that we've learned. So we'd bring that back without any problems and all the dependencies, we'd figure them out and correct them all. Okay. But we certainly back up all the attachments to everything that, um, that is, uh, that's in QBO. I mean, the, the problem that HubDoc ran into, um, you know, where they deleted all of their attachments, it was, it was really unfortunate because I think it took QuickBooks about four or five months before they were able to recover that data. We, we literally could have done that for customers in a matter of minutes or seconds. Like we, we had all the data. If customers had rewind and installed, we can easily um, reattach any attachment back to any object. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm, I'm asking the obvious that an invoice is gonna look like what it looked like before. Okay, yeah. I'm just free willing my thoughts here. It's a, uh, I don't have an inside voice. Um, That's fine. Uh, what was one of my other, oh, apps. Um, so if, uh, so, oh, I'm gonna let you lead here. You take what's next and then I'll ask my question. Sure, uh, so I'll, I'll just finish off with the slides here. And I think I know the question you're gonna ask. So you've know, definitely got customers like Jeannie and Lynn that are, that are loving Rewind. Um, it really does provide an, on, an undo button. You know, we've trademarked the term magic undo um, for what Rewind allows you to do, right? So it allows you to instantly undo any unwanted change that you've got on a uh, item basis, which is a lot different than what other backup solutions provide, um, either what you had for QBO or what you had for QB Desktop or what you've got for QBO through options like Chronobooks and others. Um, in terms of pricing, pricing is $5 per account per month. Um, and so that's, uh, that's for any accountant where you've got multiple accounts. Um, you can join the accountant program. You go to rewind.io slash accountants. I'll just open that up. And is that Canadian or U.S. dollars? Good question. I know uh, Paul was likely going to ask that, weren't you? When are we doing that? Um, Paul is leading the charge on getting us to bill in Canadian dollars, but at the moment it is in U.S. dollars because of the credit card company that um, that we're using is only billing in U.S. dollars because of how we set up for Shopify and Big Commerce. So something that's on our list of things to do to try and change that to um, Canadian, but at the moment it's U.S. dollars. Um, Bianca, do you want to unmute and ask your question, or do you want me to read it? It's always fun to see you, though, Bianca. There you are. Go ahead and ask your question live. You're muted. Hold on. Hold the phone there. Oh, oh now I unmuted you. Okay, go ahead. Um, yeah, I was just curious. So if, if since um, you've changed the item code for, a, for a, a sales item, and then you've done the rewind, is it going to bring it back to recognize the new item code? Or will it reinstate the, the old name? Um, I'd have to double check the particular um, the particular details of that, that item. I know for invoices, when you rewind an invoice, it brings it back with the old ID. So I'm guessing it's going to bring it back with the same um, the same ID. Uh, we'd have to sort of triple check that, but I'd be 99% sure it's bringing it back with the same one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, just uh, I noticed something interesting, Mike, just looking at my account as you were talking. Yeah. And um, I use the uh, work tab 
um, and QBO uh, for tracking all of my tasks. And I noticed that um, you actually, if I make some changes to them, you're actually even updating and backing up those items as well. So it's not yeah, just financial transactions. Now it doesn't look like everything is there, but uh, I'm just looking at the list there and I'm like, oh, those are all those ones I changed the date on and you've backed them up, so. Oh. Yeah, it's really, I mean, any data that QBO is making available is, is what we're getting. So that doesn't, it's good to know, but it doesn't surprise me. We, we, we often default or, or the, you know, our, our default behavior is just to get as much as we can. The, the worst, the worst experience for us from a customer perspective was that they were looking to rewind something and we didn't back it up. So we always get as much as we can. Anything that's available, we're getting it and backing it up. Customers don't know, you know, what they need and what they don't need. They, mm -hmm. they just want to make sure that if there's a problem, it's going to come back the way it was. Yeah. Good to know. Does rewind affect and show up in the audit log? Uh, so, it will it will show up um, as items that are being updated. Um, it will it will if it's changing things back up. It will show up in the audit log as an item is being changed. I don't believe the audit log shows which app um, did the change, but I might be wrong there. Okay. Can cannot can we talk about where the um, our ability to then, I back to the control thing. So what can we then do with the file that Rewind has? So you back yeah, so up our file and then what can we do to have even more control of that file? Right, so at any point you can ask us to export your data. We'll likely um, in the near future add, a, add an automatic, um, way for you to download that data but for now it's a manual request so you just click on the little icon in the corner and you talk to our friendly support people and you'd say hey Annie can you just export my data to you we will um, zip up all the data that it, we have um, backed up so it's equivalent to you know the the virtual file that you had in the old days and you can store that data wherever you like you can sort in Google Drive or Dropbox or on your own home folder or whatever um, and, and you've got a secondary copy of it. Um, we, we, we sort of stress to people that it is, that is not a replacement for the backup. So people shouldn't think like, oh, I can just have them export my data um, and then rewind it. Um, we need the ability to access that data. So it all has, in order to restore it, in order to rewind it, it has to be still, you know, you still need to be subscribed to rewind. But at any point, we can export that data and send you a snapshot of what it looks like. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we automated that in the future. Um, you know, we certainly, we certainly don't want to be um, doing manual work on an ongoing basis for customers. So the more people that request those exports, the more likely we are, we will we'll start to automate that and let people download it and potentially eventually integrate directly into Dropbox or other services. When we first, first started with Shopify uh, four years ago, we did integrate with Dropbox. We, we saved all the data or an export of the data into Dropbox. The problem was that people were filling up their Dropboxes um, quite quickly because there's, you know, in some cases, there's quite a bit of data that we're storing. And so although it's still, you know, zipping and compressing it and trying to make it as small as possible, um, in a lot of cases, it would fill up people's Dropboxes if we were doing that on a regular basis. So it's currently a manual request, but, um, but you can ask for it at any point to, you know, have a safe, safeguard of your data so that if something happens to QBO and something happens to Rewind, you've at least got a copy of your data back to the point that you last requested it. Okay, great. Um, oh, attachments. So when we have the file, so let's say we've closed down a QuickBooks file. Um, you know, the procedure now is that if, if depending on what you've been doing for your, um, especially for your AR, if you haven't been pushing your AR, your invoices, uh, over to whatever your document storage is. So I push all of my, um, I BCC everything into either Receipt Bank or HubDoc or whatever it is I have the client on. But, um, and then, you know, you've got to get 
everything out, including the attachments. So you got to go and download from the attachment center. What it, what it like, so you are down, you are backing up the attachments as well. Yeah. What they'd be included in the export. Right. Uh, so like, is it a, a, is there like an attachment f sort of portion of the, I'm just trying to see what the, what, I'm not even sure why, how I'm asking this question, but that the attachments are downloaded and backed up. Yeah. And, and they're, and they're related to items, right? Like, like right. you attach the attachment to, you know, an invoice or a receipt or whatever it is. Um, that, that relationship um, is in whatever it's being attached to. So it's in the receipt or it's in the invoice or it's in the, the whatever it happens to be attached to. And we, when we, when, when you read the data for, you know, the, uh, the receipt, um, it would say, okay, you need this attachment. And we'd go into the attachments folder and look that up. Oh, that was really the question I was asking. I guess there's an attachments folder somewhere. Or a few of them, yeah. There is. If you, so if you download that zip file, yeah, there's going to be, um, it's probably going to be called attachable, um, but it, it would show us up as an attachable and you'd have all of your attachments in that one folder. Okay. All right. Um, back to you. I'll let you actually do the uh, presentation you were planning on and stop interrupting. Maybe. That's it, actually. I mean, it's a... It's a very simple, it's, hopefully you can see, it's really been designed to be very easy to use, um, very simple. Uh, we like to say it's sort of like a set it and forget it type of application where you set it up and then that's it. There's no settings. You, you really don't need to do anything um, at all. For those of you that use a Mac like I do, the Rewind was modeled after Time Machine, which is you know very simple. You set it up, you say what you're going to back up and where it's going to go, and then it does it and you never have to worry about it. You don't come into rewind and run a backup it just happens on an ongoing automated basis actually um, it's funny i think that's why i bonded with it i was a mac user for yeah. for always until a few years ago and it felt very much and i i love time machine and it felt like time machine and time machine was what i was looking for for the last couple of years for my clients because safety net just i didn't ever understand it Right. And, and that's, I mean, that's the inspiration, right? Is, is a nice, very simple, easy to use product mm -hmm. um, that there are no settings. You know, you don't select what you're going to back up. We talked about, you know, where you're going to back up your data, but you don't select when does the backup happen. Um, you don't have to set it up. Um, the, the interface that you see here, I think is, you know, beautiful interface. It's really easy to use. Um, and, and really that's it. I mean, that's all there is to show for Rewind. You've got the ability to search through the vault. You can see all the items in a nice chronological order as you're updating things. Um, you can filter items out so you can get to exactly what you want to rewind. And in the cases where you have to rewind multiple items, you've definitely got that ability. You can come in and select what you want or everything. Um, so it ends up as a really, really flexible backup system um, that has you know, certainly helped um, hundreds of customers already in the short time it's been available, hundreds of QBO customers to, you know, fix problems that they've had. Um, what we've seen so far generally is about 20% of the clients that have end up using it, which surprises a lot of people. Um, yeah. They don't, they don't really think it's, it's, it's that high, but there's a lot of use for it once you've got it in there because it becomes, you know, and it, it's a, certainly a disaster recovery tool, but it also becomes a bit of a productivity tool where you can do things like what you were talking about, Kelly, of, you know, trying new things, trying new apps, uh, you know, you test things, see whether they work and rewind becomes that undo um, feature. Um, yeah, cool. Okay. So, but I, I have a question on what, restore looks like rewind looks like so right now i don't quite get the difference so we would take a backup file so we've gotten rid of the qbo file it's gone um so i guess there's a difference if we suspend the uh subscription or if we get rid of it all together on what backing it up looks like is that correct because you can't port right now into a, a brand so, new file, right? Um, we, I mean, we, if you needed us to port into a brand new file, um, like one of the exported files because your clients were being audited, 
we could we would do that work for you yes so although we don't do it automatically can it be done yes it can absolutely be done and we would do it for clients that needed it um there's currently no way to do that in an automated way where you come in and self-serve yourself and you know upload your file but if you needed us to upload a file for one of the clients that you've closed down and restore them into a new QBO account, we could absolutely do that. We would absolutely do that for you. Okay, but uh, so the use case scenario uh, for some of us, because I don't have a desktop program right now, and um, I know my buddy is in here, or uh, is in here, and I've been known to use his cube, his QBO, his QB desktop account and file for this purpose. But uh, create a perfect client file for rest, I'm just gonna use restaurants, it's always my favorite, construction is another great example, um, not for profits, um, all of that kind of stuff. You create the perfect desktop file in desktop, or in desktop, and then you convert it. You do a migration, a conversion, whatever you wanna call it, to QBO. But a lot of us don't even have the desktop anymore. And so creating our perfect chart of accounts, some of them have the same vendors, like if, if um, items, all that kind of stuff, if it could just be um, a template, really. Yeah, it's a template. Thank you. That's the word. It's a template that you would use to start off a, a new file exactly the way that you want it. Yeah. So that's, yeah. And that's, that's the use case of us being able to do that automatically. For exa example, my buddy Esther Freeberg, who's like awesome. She did 70 not-for-profit files that were all the base was the same. And it was like, she could just do it through QB desktop, but she still yeah, has replicating. Desktop. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so I know um, more from our team is on here who's sort of leading the product effort on our side. Um, and we're always looking for, we're always looking to better understand the use cases of why people want to copy mm -hmm. from one account to another. Um, so we've come across that one. We've come across um, we've come across some others, and so um, to, we're working right now. We're working on two things. One is the automated restoring of data, um, so these account rewinds and doing that automatically, so we don't need to get involved because because um, we don't want to. Uh, we want to do it automatically and free up our time. And then the second one is um, the copy use case, so being able to take the data from one account and clone it into another QBO account. And so both of those things are being worked on and I'd expect them to be done in the next month or two. Okay. Oh, in the next month or two. Oh, okay. Great. Oh, well, that's good news. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're both actively being worked on. It's a very similar, um, they're, they're actually quite similar in their, um, in, in how we develop them. Um, so that is, they're both coming very quickly. And so you'd be able to do exactly what you said, which is, you know, create this, this, this model account, um, you know, certainly the ability to maybe take that model account and, and not have it as an active QBO account is something that's a bit separate from what we were planning to do, but it still makes a lot of sense. You take this model account and then be able to clone that, that model account across a bunch of different QBO accounts. That is, um, th that should be definitely possible later this year. Okay, great. Okay. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to cover? Because we're getting to close to the end. Yeah, no, that was it for me. One comment for you? Yeah. Uh, Tiffany, you asked, I just uh, tried it out. And when you rewind, the audit log just shows that I reversed the transaction. So uh, it does show up on the audit log, but it shows as myself. So I think that's what you were asking, Tiffany. <laughs> I think actually, so, and to be more specific there, the reason it's showing up as you is because you are the one that connected the QBO account, not because you're logged into Rewind. Um, it's because you connected QBO um, under your own account. So if you're in a situation where you've got um, multiple people that are accessing QBO, um, so you might have a, you know, an organization where you've got multiple accounts or bookkeepers, you know, and uh, let's say Sam instead logged in instead of Paul, um, when you went to rewind that, it would still say Paul, when, if Sam went in and rewound it, it would still say Paul did it because you were the one that originally linked the account. And it's the same thing if he had linked to the account, it would show up as him. <laughs> I, I, re, I thanks Paul, because I remember that now. Okay. Okay. I wonder if there would be a way that you could put a slash 
you know, rewound or something on there with the user, just as a yeah. tag that, you know, people would like to know. You so know. that would be feedback for QBO, right? Because they do know, Q QuickBooks knows that we are the one that is making that call through your account. So, so they're, they're aware of it. And they won't. That, there's nothing, we can't change the name that's associated with it, but QBO knows that that's happening. So that would be a suggestion to send into Intuit and say, hey, when an app is doing this, rather than saying it's the person, it should actually say the app name, not the person. Perfect. Yeah. Or else maybe we can set up a user for the app and have them connect the app. And then we know exactly who does everything. You could do that as well. And if you did that, then that would work perfectly. That's right. That's like, so smart. Box. it's smart. Wow. Yeah. Tiffany smart. SMRT. <laughs> I got um, that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we're at the, uh, we made it. We're at the end. We got a minute to spare, according to my computer anyways. Anybody else have any questions for Mike? No. Thanks, everyone. So if you do end up with questions, you can email me anytime. It's mike at rewind.io. And the URL you were looking for um, is rewind.io slash accountants. Um, and you can learn more information. You can get started by filling out that form. Um, to help us out uh, to understand how you heard about us and how many clients you've got on QBO. Okay, that's great. Well, Mike, I certainly appreciate your time on this. And uh, yeah, and it's, it's, I mean, I know I said it before, I, I feel so much better now that I've actually figured out what it is that I'm doing in my little backup world. Because I think a few of you in here know I was circling that for quite a bit. Uh, and um, so anyways, it's, it's great. And I appreciate you doing the demo. Absolutely. Happy to do it. Thanks, Bill. Okay. I appreciate your time. Okay, Bye, everybody. Thanks. Nice seeing you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye.